Now, I don't mean to alarm anyone out there, but the Associated Press has obtained top-secret recordings of military-grade, brain-frying, microwave radiation technology that is being deployed on American diplomats around the world, even as we speak. So, for your edification, I'm going to play some of that recording. Now, you may want to cover your ears, you may want to turn the sound all the way down, but I will endure this sound because it is my task as a reporter here to bring this information to you. So here it goes. And play. Oh! Oh! No, no! Make it stop! Oh, oh my god. Whew. I hope everyone out there is okay. I know I'm definitely feeling the effects of that recording. <clears throat> but as I say, the Associated Press obtained this top secret recording back in 2017 and shared it with the world so that we could all experience a little bit of what those fearless and brave American diplomats have had to endure over the last couple of years as this mystery has unfolded before us. And I'm sure you will all remember, because of course, that valiant and brave truth-teller of the mainstream truth-telling media, Andrea Mitchell, was all over NBC and MSNBC back a year ago telling us about this important technology. The mystery, who or what caused American officials living in these Havana homes and several hotels to suffer headaches, dizziness, and some serious brain injuries similar to a concussion. Last year, Cuban investigators told us they would never allow their territory to be used that way. But now Russia is the leading suspect, NBC News has learned, according to three U.S. officials and two others briefed on the investigation. Evidence, they say, backed up by highly secret communications intercepts collected during a lengthy and ongoing investigation involving the FBI, CIA, and other agencies. U.S. officials also tell NBC News investigators now believe the Americans were deliberately targeted. Exclusive new reporting this morning from NBC News. Intelligence agencies investigating attacks on U.S. diplomats in Cuba and China now strongly suspect that Russia is to blame. 26 government workers in Havana had mysterious brain injuries starting in late 2016. And then this year, one U.S. worker in China was diagnosed with similar symptoms. Joining me now with more on this is NBC News intelligence and national security reporter Ken Delaney. And so this has been a mystery. The CIA, the FBI. FBI, other intelligence agencies have all been working to try to figure out what exactly happened here. Why do they suspect Russia now and what's the evidence that they have? But now, Andrea, this is really more than a theory. This is the main suspect, and it's backed up with at least some information from some communications intercepts known as signals intelligence that officials tell NBC News that the U.S. government has developed. But, Andrea, it's not yet conclusive enough for the U.S. to take what would be a very dramatic step of formally accusing Russia of being behind these attacks. Uh, so the United States will continue to develop evidence, try to hunt this down. Oh dear, it's worse than we thought. Not only is this some sort of super unbelievable high-tech technology that even the CIA and the intelligence and military apparatus of the United States government can't figure out what this is, but it's definitely the Ruskies. And how do we know this? Well, there's no actual evidence, but there's some kind of signals intelligence that some people, unnamed sources, have told us about. Trust us. Have we ever lied to you? I don't know about you guys, but I'm sold hook, line, and sinker on this story. And for extra bonus, please do go into the show notes for this pod Propaganda Watch edition so you can go and watch that, that third clip in that, uh, that series there in its entirety. Not only do you get five straight minutes of hyperventilation about the new Cold War and Russia as the enemy and the boogeyman and the menace, but at the very end, there's a particularly bizarre 
moment where for absolutely no reason Andrea Mitchell says to one of the reporters, tell us about where you were on 9-11 and he proceeds to give the story of working in the Treasury Department when the Pentagon was hit and and uh, well, many more would have lives would have been lost if it wasn't for those valiant people in Flight 93. Just completely out of nowhere, completely nothing whatsoever to do with the segment. It's a particularly interesting one to watch in its entirety. But as I say, I trust these people in the mainstream media implicitly. I mean, look at them with their well-coiffed hair, perfectly lit studios. I mean, <laughs> look, this this is what liars and, and deceit makers look like, and people like that clearly are there just to tell you truth and apple pie American goodness, right? Well, I mean, there's one or two things that we might want to question about that. For example, the New Yorker had an extensive... Very extensive, 11,000 word report that I dare you to go and read in its entirety uh, called The Mystery of the Havana Syndrome, which uh, they released uh, in November of 2018. And just to show you how voluminous this report is, why don't I actually show it on screen? So here is the report, and it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on and on about Obama opening up relations with Cuba and the negotiations and secret Skype accounts that were created because they didn't want to give the Cubans access to White House Situation Room lines and blah de blah de blah and they go on and on and on, and they slip in, oh yeah, the State Department did kind of do, run some programs to undermine the Cuban government, but, you know, that's neither here nor there, and etc., etc., it just keeps going on and on, and then it starts talking about, a little bit about these attacks and the, 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 the symptoms that these various diplomatic workers were, were, were uh, experiencing in the, the wake of these attacks, and they note that, uh, it didn't even have a name, per se. Um, they, they didn't know what to call the condition, so they just called it The Thing. Lee and her doctors didn't know what to call the mystery condition, so some of them referred to it as The Thing. Smith said other names came later, including Immaculate Concussion and Havana Syndrome. At the end of the testing, Lee told one of the specialists that she didn't think she had The Thing. The specialist replied, Oh, it's definitely the thing. <laughs> Again, such thorough and well-documented medical evidence here. I mean, how can you dispute it? And if you keep going down and down and down, you'll find out about the University of Pennsylvania researchers who definitely super triple confirmed this. It's definitely real, guys. And they studied, a, they published a study in the Journal of the American Medical Association um, that argued the victims appeared to suffer from a new type of brain network disorder. Uh, similar to the damage seen in patients with mild traumatic brain injuries. And after the study was published, Jem received letters from other specialists arguing that the study was flawed, especially in neglecting psychological explanations. And they go on about these, uh, these damn pesky researchers who didn't quite buy into this new medical syndrome that has just been discovered, this Havana syndrome. Oh, what is it? What's going on? Um, but interestingly enough, way down, and you see how big this article is, way down at the very, near the very, very end of this article, they just slip in that, oh yeah, uh, well, if there was a weapon of whatever kind, who wielded it and to what end, despite a long investigation into the incidents, the U.S. government can't answer these questions. It's been a more, more than a year and a half since the first reported health incident in Havana, and we know no more today about the cause than we did then, Leahy said. In September, NBC News reported that U.S. intelligence agencies considered Russia to be the main suspect, citing evidence from communications intercepts. But intelligence officials, in interviews with The New Yorker, insisted that they still had no evidence of Russian complicity. So, if you read through, oh, about 10,000 of the 11,000 words of these, this uh, voluminous report, you might get the little kernel buried at the very bottom that, oh yeah, there's actually no evidence. <laughs> but anyway, it's probably some super secret weapon that they're deploying on us. Um, I mean, come on. It's the Russians. Do Need we say more? <laughs> Well, apparently not, at least not for people like uh, Cory Gardner. Uh, this coming from RollCall.com. Of course, Cardin Cory Gardner renews calls for Russia to be declared a sponsor of terrorism after reports on sonic attacks. 
And so clearly, if this report is good enough for Senator Cory Gardner, Republican from Colorado, well, it's good enough for me. I mean, look at that face. I mean, he, he has to be trusted. Right? These guys know what they're talking about. Because, as we all know, the mainstream media always tells us that it's the crazy weirdos sitting there in their living room in Japan who are coming up with these crazy conspiracy narratives concocted out of whole cloth. And it's the, the calm, serious national security analysts and reporters at NBC News and other fine, reputable outlets that get to the bottom of these things and tell us what's really going on with the super-secret microwave radiation brain-frying technology that we don't know about and is producing some sort of unnameable, unknowable disorder that is highly questionable and being questioned by a lot of other researchers. That's one hell of a conspiracy theory, don't you think? Well... <laughs> Here's another little tiny little wrench that was thrown into the works of this conspiracy theory that the MSM has been propounding for the last year or two. This one coming from biorxiv.org. Uh, recording of sonic attacks on U.S. diplomats in Cuba spectrally matches the echoing call of a Caribbean cricket. <laughs> Yes, uh, you can go through and read uh, just from the abstract here. Beginning in late 2016, diplomats posted to the U.S. Embassy in Cuba began to experience unexplained health problems, including ear pain, tinnitus, vertigo, and cognitive difficulties. In response, the U.S. government dramatically reduced the number of diplomats posted in Havana. The sound linked to these attacks, which has been described as a high-pitched beam of sound, was recorded by U.S. personnel in Cuba and released by the Associated Press. Because these recordings are the only available non-medical evidence of the sonic attacks, much attention is focused on identifying health problems and the origin of the acoustic signal. As shown here, the calling song of the Indies' short-tailed cricket and Neurogrillus celerinictus matches in nuanced detail the AP recording in duration, pulse repetition rate, power spectrum, pulse rate stability, and oscillations per pulse. The AP recording also exhibits frequency decay in individual pulses, a distinct acoustic signature of cricket sound production. While the temporal pulse structure in the recording is unlike any natural insect source, when the cricket call is played on a loudspeaker and recorded indoors, the interaction of reflected sound pulses yields a sound virtually indistinguishable from the AP sample. Long story short, this is a recording of cricket sounds. <laughs> <laughs> remember remember the AP and their dangerous sound that they published for you? Remember that uh, that that sound? That was this. The Indie Short-Tailed Cricket. Oh, behold, the fearsome cricket in all its fearsome glory. Oh, no! Ah. <laughs> Make it stop! Oh. So... I hope the point of today's video is crystal clear. The biggest purveyors of conspiracy nonsense out there are the mainstream media establishment cronies and lackeys who are nothing other than repeaters of whatever line is coming from whatever government agency is feeding them a line today. And they will just run with it, and they will report it, and they are the professionals who are getting the inside scoop about signals, intelligence, and blah blah blah, secret technology, no one knows what it is, but it must be the Russians, we have no proof, but it doesn't matter. These are the conspiracy peddlers that are clearly trying to lead the public in a certain direction, and the big... Headline stories will get all the coverage. Oh my god, secret microwave radiation attacks. But the niggly little details about that, uh, that, uh, the, the actual report. And please do go and read through the actual paper that they, uh, they link here in, uh, f uh f it's not just an abstract, it's an actual scientific paper where they show in great detail the, the pulse rates and the oscillations and everything. It is a cricket sound uh, that, that's been recorded. But more so than that, even, uh, they do get into the issue of the, um, the University of Pennsylvania, uh, paper that was criticized as using an arbitrarily low threshold for neurological impairment. The idea is, this was, at best, a psychological phenomenon. People were hearing about, oh, there's this thing that's going on that's affecting people, and they started to come down with the symptoms that were not quite nail downable, and I can't really quite pinpoint what this is, but it must be some new disorder. No, it was 
at best, it was the public being traumatized, or the diplomatic workers being traumatized by hearing these other stories and believing, duping themselves into believing they had it, at best. And on a societal scale, that's what propaganda like this is meant to do. When we hear nothing but these stories of this extraordinary weapons technology that's being used on you by these Ruskies that are hiding under every bed, it puts people into a fear state where they will begin to enact this in the real world, whether that's some sort of neurological disorder or whatever else it is. That fear state is what they want you to dwell in. And that's why the headline, the sensational headlines about secret brain frying microwave radiation will get all the coverage, the retractions will get none. Except in the alternative media where I, and I think some others out there, are trying to keep the MSN honest. No, I don't think that's even possible, or at least trying to show how they are liars. So, that's the story for today. Propaganda Watch, as always, please go to the show notes so you can get all of the different uh, uh, pieces of this puzzle all linked there in the show notes so you can go and explore this. But (laughs) just another example, if any were needed, that the biggest peddlers of conspiracy nonsense are the establishment media lackeys. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.